أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآل ذي الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين So I was talking about the difference between hamd and And uh, so, uh, just to finish the, what is remaining, let me connect it with the previous discussion. So, in shukr, it is compulsory uh, it, that uh, there are two components of that uh, impact of the shukr. Uh, the blessing in shukr must reach <coughs> someone other than the the mashkul first component of shukr is that the ni'mat that is related to the shukr, the, the blessing which is related to shukr, uh, the, the impact of that blessing must reach somebody who is other than the mashkur, other than the, the one who is providing the blessing, which is in this case, in our example, it's Allah is a mashkur, he is the one whom we are thanking. The impact of the blessing uh, related to shukr must reach Someone other than Allah, someone other than the one who is kind. That's the first component of shukr. and showing the gratitude for doing shukr. Must be one. Must be one. That means the same person who receives the blessing should be the one who should be uh, doing shukr and uh, uh, being grateful and thanking. So there, there has to be a uni unity between receiver and the thankful. These are two components in the, uh, in, in the shukr. Whereas in hum, none of those two are part of the concept of hum. Now having said this difference, let's go to what my teacher said, that this description that we just mentioned in the <coughs> excuse me, different between hum and concept of hum and shukar, 
this is a description that Ahlul Lugha scholars, those who deal with the delicacies of the language have mentioned. This is a description that uh, Ahlul Lugha have mentioned. So this is not a, a description that uh, Quran or Hadith or Islamic perspective is teaching these, this difference. So this is not a description given from Islam. This is a description given from Ahlul Lugha. And scholars who deal, and those are the people who deal with the language and its uh, you know, delicacies, they are the ones who mention this difference. So, uh, mm, so my teacher said that the impact of uh, the blessing of related to shukr must reach somebody other than Allah, other than the mashkur. This is not necessary component because uh, mm, that's not part of the essence of shukr. Uh, in the case of Allah, we use the word Allah. One of the names of Allah is also Ash-Shakir, right? One of the names of Allah is Shakir. And, uh, the one who is grateful and thankful. Allah is thanking and thankful and grateful. So Allah is shakir, whereas Allah Himself is doing the shukr. Now, is Allah is the impact of His own shukr going to reach uh, his, his, his own self? No. Allah being <coughs> grateful, that's one of His names. The impact of gratefulness of Allah is not reaching Allah. No way. And neither is Allah receiving a blessing for, from himself to himself. So the receiver of the blessing and the, the one who is thanking uh, the blessing are one. None of those two are correct in the favor of Allah. Because first of all, Allah doesn't stand in need of his own self. That's a very important point that I want to mention tonight. So... Uh, how where do we learn this from that Allah doesn't stand in need of his own self to receive anything from his own even from his own self well this is what we learn from Dua of Arafah if you want you can take a picture I can <coughs> erase that <coughs> And we learn from this dua, Allah doesn't stand in need of his own self. He's not receiving anything from his own self. He doesn't even stand in need of anyone, including his own self. Uh, the essence of Allah is al ghina al-sirf. means uh, absolute Needlessness, absolute needlessness, absolute richness. This is the essence of Allah. Let's go to the evidence. Here is the evidence of Dua of Arafah of Imam Hussain. We learn the Ma'arif and high level concepts from the Quran and Dua's of Amul Bayt. These are the sources, right? Ilahi Taqadda Saradaka. Imam Hussain says in his Dua of Arafah, Taqadda Saradaka. And 
أن تكون له علة منك فكيف تكون له علة مني بذاتك أنت الغني بذاتك أن يصل إليك النفع فكيف تكون غنية؟ فكيف لا تكون؟ فكيف لا تكون غنية؟ عني. <coughs> so this is the dua of Arafa of Imam Hussein عليه السلام. This dua segment of the dua of Arafah, we learn that, <coughs> um, oh my Lord, you are, you are, your, <coughs> your pleasure is glorified, and uh, to be, to, uh, that there is a, a, a cause for you, so you are glorified from having any cause for you. How in the world would you will there be any cause from me towards you? So, oh my Lord, until Dani Vedatik, you are needless in your essence. That any benefit from you can reach you. How would a benefit? How why why wouldn't you be rich and needless from me? So this is the point that we are mentioning. And yes, like minka. So no benefit from you can reach you. That's the point we were discussing. If you remember my previous uh, slide, previous uh, uh, thing that we wrote on the whiteboard, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is one of His uh, asma al asma al husna. Beautiful names is a shakir. He is himself grateful and thankful. So if uh, what Ahlul Lugha, um, people of the language have said that in Shukr, the impact of the blessing must reach someone other than the blessing provider, whereas Allah Himself is also Shakir, right? Provider, uh, thankful. So if that's not acceptable, my teacher said, because in the case of Allah, not, no blessing from Allah is reaching Allah because Allah doesn't stand in need of anything even towards His own self. His own self is rich and needless towards his own self. He, this is why I, I wrote in the beginning for Allah, we use the word 
Alghina or Sirf, absolute needlessness. That's the description of the essence of Allah. Even nothing, no benefit from Allah can reach Allah because He is the needlessness in its absolute form. How in the world can Allah be receiving any impact from His own blessings for Himself? So, this difference that people of the language Ahlullah have mentioned is not acceptable from the Islamic perspective. Also, the second one which I mentioned that Mutanaim and Shakir, the receiver of the blessing and the person who is grateful and thanking, thank that, that person who is thanking and doing shukr and the receiver should be one. Again, that's also not acceptable from the Islamic perspective because that doesn't apply on Allah and Allah Himself is a Shakir. From the Islamic perspective, we disagree with what Ahlul Luga have said. They can say what they want to say. But, uh, you know, Lughat and language has to be in sync with the Holy Quran, has to be in sync with the Holy Prophet, has to be in sync. They are the biggest eloquent. Who is the biggest eloquent? Allah, who is the creator of language of Allah, or lang uh, Arabic and all the rest of languages. Allah, who is the biggest fasi and uh, uh, eloquent language speaking person in the history. The Holy Prophet. No one can speak Arabic better than Rasulullah, right? So, whatever the people of language may say, they are free to say, but at the end of the day, we, are, we, will, we will verify it with the Holy Quran, who is the prime source of Arabic, and we will verify from Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt, who are the biggest eloquent personalities ever living. So, Ahlul Luga also need to adjust what they said according to Quran and the Prophet not vice versa. Prophet is not going to learn anything from Ahlul Lugha. Who are Ahlul Lugha to teach? Who are the Arabs to teach the Holy Prophet? And nobody can teach nothing to Rasulullah. So, from the Islamic perspective, my teacher said, we don't accept what people of the Arabic language have said. It's not supported by Islam. So, uh, so this is so when this scenario uh, is clear, clean, clear uh, is is cleared up, then we will end up learning that shukr and hum have this kind of relationship, right? So shukr has a smaller uh, scope, whereas hum has a larger scope, which means everything that we classify as shukr will also be classified as quote unquote hum. But everything which is hum may not be classified as shukr. That brings us to the uh, almost to the end of the dif differences discussion of differences between hamd and madh versus haju and qadh that we discussed their opposites and relation with the opposites and the distinct how to distinguish between hamd and shukr. Praise and gratefulness. Now let's move forward to the next slide. So you can so take a picture. One, uh, so, so the thing that we typically discuss with the, the linguistic scholars is that the uh, the um, Mishkur and Shakir don't have to be the same. No, no. They said Mutanaqim and Shakir has to be the same. The receiver of the Nehmat of Shukr should be the one who is grateful. Okay. But that's not acceptable because Allah Himself is Shakir. One of the smart is a Shakir. So Allah is doer of the shukr. When He is doer of the shukr, He is not the one who is receiving any blessing from His own self. Imam Hussain says that you are rich from receiving any benefit from you to you. So He is not going to receive any blessing from Himself to <coughs> Himself. That's impossible from Islamic perspective. And one of the names of Allah is Shaka. And his name is Ashaq. Yeah. But the other part, the impact of the shukur. Uh, okay, so the impact of the shukur doesn't have to reach the shaka. Doesn't have to reach the shaka. That's the second thing that people of Lugat have said, people of language have said. That's also not acceptable because nothing of Allah's, you know, his impact of being providing all those blessings is not reaching himself because he is absolute needlessness. 
But there's nothing about the Shakar and Mashkur don't have to be the same. Mm, shakar and Mashkur, mm, well, mm, uh, Shakar and Mashkur cannot be the same according to Ahlul Lohat. Oh, that's, so that, that's also what I mean. So, uh, in some Islamic perspective, it can be the same because Allah is Shakar and He is also Mashkur. Okay. And that's not a problem. So, is both, that, so both rules we don't accept basically. Both rules are un-Islamic. What the people of the language of Arabic have said is an un-Islamic, unacceptable difference between Hamd and Shukr and both are rejected from the Islamic perspective. People of Arabic need to learn the rules of Arabic basically from Quran and the Holy Prophet, Sunnah and Hadith. So, so far we haven't actually talked about the real difference between Hamd and Shukr. So the uh, real difference is what we discussed that shukr means, uh, you know, you are talking about, uh, you know, um, gratefulness, uh, which may reach the uh, um, uh, someone other than Allah, uh, the impact, or may not reach anyone. In the case of Allah, he's shakir. Uh, he is performing the shukr, but there is no impact reaching his own self. So a shukr is that kind of thankfulness and gratefulness whose impact may reach someone or may not reach nobody. But that's the same for Hamd. No, in the, in the case of Hamd, that's, yeah, that's not, in the case of Hamd, that's not there at all. Even by the Ahlul Lughat, they don't even mention that, right? So Hamd is just a... Uh, a praise done on an amalun ikhtiyari, an action which was in your uh, reach to do, right. and you do it with your, you know. Even, even if it doesn't reach the issue. Even, even if it doesn't reach the issue. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so far there, there's no difference, basically. Well, there are mm, differences. Because, uh, um, uh, unless shukr can be done for something that's not. Uh, under the, the free will or intelligence? No, it is done with the free will, but the thing is that shukr is, uh, from the Islamic perspective, is uh, uh, so every uh, shukr is a hamd and praise, but every hamd is not necessarily a shukr. That's the first thing. And uh, the second thing is that, from the Islamic perspective, a shukr is practical always. Uh, you can do the shukr orally, but the real shukr is not only oral. Oral shukr is not is subject to the approval by Allah only if we perform the practical shukr. Shukr and gratefulness as a concept in Islam has to be practically done. Yes, we have oral shukr talk to us. We say, Shukran lillah, shakartu lillah, ashukru lillah, various derivatives of language where we orally express that we are grateful towards Allah. So these are oral expressions of shukr, but none of them are accepted unless it, it is coupled with the practice of shukr, which means that practice of shukr is that avoiding, <coughs> avoiding abuse of his <coughs> blessings. <coughs> Practical shukr is that is done only when we avoid the abuse of the blessings of Allah. So shukr is as a, as a concept of Islam is yes it is done orally but it's not going to be accepted until the practical aspect is taken care of. That's the real shukr. So the practical aspect means that every blessing that we receive from Allah we need to avoid Abusing that blessing, uh, which means abuse of a nikmat and blessing means that I utilize, uh, I misuse a blessing that I receive for performing a haram. This is called abuse of a blessing of Allah. So hamd is never practical. Well, hamd can be practical as well, you know, but uh, hamd is uh, is. In the essence, is not required to be practical. In the case of sugar, if the practical aspect is not taken care of, oral aspect is not even accepted from the Islamic perspective. 
So you can say that in the essence, shukr has to be practical only. Oral is not sufficient. It's subject to performing the practical shukr, practical gratefulness, which means I don't use my eyesight and vision to, to look at haram things. But this is called I'm avoiding the abuse of a blessing uh, Allah gave. Uh, I don't misuse the blessing of vision to do a haram. If I abuse the blessing given to me and I, if I use it to do a haram, if I use my eyes to do a haram, I'm not practically thankful. Even if I say a shukru lillah, oral thankfulness and gratefulness, that's not accepted. Is that clear? Yes. So what about for other for people for you know thanking someone other than Allah? Is it also you have it has to be practical? Yeah, either um, thanking other than than so. Uh, so in the case of Allah, it has been said like this that we don't abuse the blessings. Again, that's um, we learn from the hadith. So, Imam Ali uh, Salam had said, if you want, I can write that hadith. Then, Abdullah Shukr. that you don't take a help from the ni'mats and blessings of Allah towards doing sinning against Allah. So that's the minimum shukr, which is all again the some practical aspect. Hamd is a praise which is in essence it can be done with the tongue and that's the prime way of doing the praise is through the tongue. So hamd in its essence is oral. Shukr in its essence is practical. But every shukr is also the hum. So hum has a wider range. So every shukr is included in hum as well. Just trying to understand one other thing. Then. How does this um, Does shukr and hum, how does that relate to mud? Because just looking at the kind of like the hierarchy mm -hmm. of you know so which is the like the narrowest one you know the narrowest criteria uh, that's shukr that shukr is shukr. the narrow one because shukr is uh, uh, shukr is the narrow one because uh, uh, shukr is uh, limited in its scope uh, hum is uh, wider in its scope because uh, uh, hamd is what we uh, we do it uh, uh, you know uh, for anybody who is uh, uh, who has any kamal so uh, it is Shukr is related to the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, right? So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orally and practically over every ni'mat and blessing that He gives us. So, uh, whereas hamd um, is very <coughs> done towards anyone other than Allah who is having any kind of kamal and perfection, perfect attribute, anything who has any Jamal, any beauty, any perfection, Kamal and Jamal in his beauty can be praised even if it is not found in, in Allah. We can do it for the creatures, we can do it uh, for the creatures of Allah as well and that is hamd. But no, that may not be shukr because it's not related to the blessings. But if I understand, so every shukr is a hamd. Correct. And every hump is a mud, but not every mud is is a hump. Is, is a hump. Every and the same is way. Not a hump. And every hump is not a sugar. 
every hunt is not a shepherd. You are right. You are right. Every hum is a mud, but every mud is not necessarily a hum. Like we said in the beginning that we can praise, for example, uh, take example of a pearl, right? <coughs> so I praise the pearl. But we don't use the word hum, hamad, hamad tan dudu. I do the hum of a dudu. So yeah, so mud is having a wider scope than hum. Because in hum, what distinguishes hum from the mud is that hum is, has to be done on something, on some uh, amal, for some action, not an attribute. Mud can be done on an attribute. Hum is done on, uh, you know, amalin ikhtiyari, on, uh, you know, on an action which is in your control, in your reach. Whereas mud can be done on an attribute of something, like beauty of a pearl, and that is not in the control of a pearl to be beautiful. So it's not in its own control, it's not in, a, in its own reach to be beautiful or not to be beautiful. So attribute of beauty is not in the control of the pearl. We praise, the, do the hum when something we are praising is, is doing that something within its reach. So it's in its, in its own reach to do it. It's not beyond its reach. For example, we don't do the hum of a person's uh, uh, <coughs> height. No, his height it was not in his reach to be tall or short. That's how, how Allah created him. But we will do his mud over his height. This is just a question. Uh, what I'm trying to just understand though is, so maybe asking um, whether the most narrowest is sugar, the question that I'm trying to basically ask is most exclusive is which sugar as well. The, the point is like if if um, because it seems mud can be applied to uh, especially from last class even things of, uh, if you of remember no we, intellect. You right? said mud is like this. Right. So mud. Some of the examples of mud may be hum. So it, it uh, coincides for some examples. It may be mud, it may be hum. We can use both of the words in some cases. But some of the uh, situations are hum only, whereas some other situations are mud only. Remember, this is what we said. But sugar is, yes, and a smaller scope as compared to the hum. Well, like last time we actually put the mud entirely inside. Is that right? Yeah. Actually, it was the other way around, I think. Yes. Because remember, I said that, uh, yeah, in some cases, right, but the, the, the no, thing no, is that... The whole circle is inside. This is hand. Yeah. Remember, I said, umumun makhusus min waj. Yeah, so then I made the circle wrong. Mm -hmm. If I wrote the circle like this, for hand and mud, it is a mistake. And I apologize. Hum and mud, this is the right way because some of the cases of, uh, of mud, like phrasing of the pearl, is not hum. So there are some cases of mud which are not called hum. And likewise, there are some cases of hum which are not called mud. Whereas there are some where you can use both the words for that. So it coincides in some of those examples, but the rest of the examples for Hamd and Mud are separate from each other, different from each other. <coughs> so last time we said um, Manhid basically for, it could be for anything uh, intelligent or non intelligent, and then Hamd has to be for something intelligent. Correct. This is one of another thing that falls here. Um, uh, uh, unintelligent things. For example, a pearl. You're praising a pearl. Pearl doesn't have intellect. 
So we don't use the word hum for praising a pearl. We use the hum for those who have intellect. So this falls here, right? So this is another good example point that um, uh, this is how the description should be. And I wrote it correctly, um, I don't know why I made that mistake of making uh, this kind of thing. And that's not a mum wa khusus men waj. So a mum wa khusus men waj is like this. So then what is the type of hamd that's not included in that? Well, a hamd which is uh, 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 and not included in mud. So mud uh, is... Uh, uh, so mud is that phrase which is performed towards an in, 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 intellectual or non-intellectual uh, and whether it is in the reach of that thing or not in the reach and it can be done over the wasf and awsaf, right? So whereas hum is done on amalun ikhtiyari, on the actions in the reach of someone, if it is done intentionally you know, but it's we use our freedom of action to do that thing, and that person who is praised has to be having intellect, and the action he does is in his reach to it to achieve, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, it is on those uh, uh, as you know, it is. Uh, here you find that the uh, awsaf and attributes are covered, right? So uh, mm, uh, here we cover those of the attributes which are in <coughs> our reach to acquire. So uh, those of the attributes which are not in our reach to acquire fall here. So, uh, so this is the difference comes that those of the awsaf and uh, which are um, in the reach of a person may be subject to hum and mud both and those of the awsaf and attributes which are not in the reach of a person to acquire like his height like you know his looks of a person is not in his reach to acquire those of the awsaf and attributes which are not in the reach of a person to acquire, we can only use the word mad in that case, but those of the awsaf and attributes which are in the reach of a person to acquire, like generosity, for example, you can use the word mad and ham both for that. But then what, is there anything that you can only use ham for but you cannot use mud for? Uh, Oh, let me think uh, what you can use hummed only as uh, uh, um, uh, example let me think yeah it's a uh, uh, did I mention any example in that lesson uh, it's not uh, you know no, in Hamd. What example did I mention? Hamd yeah. al so, uh, yeah. so Hamd al I think, was, a, was an, an example of something wrong, right? Yes. You cannot say that. Correct. Uh, no, no, yeah, example of the right <laughs> usage of Hamd that I gave at that time, <laughs> two or three lessons back. Hamd al Shaykh al Sorry? The example of infaq, spending the infaq, yeah, that's, 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 that's a good example. That's yeah. what you gave. Yeah, no, that's right, thank you. So infaq means spending. We, if we spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, not necessarily in the money only, any infaq can be for anything, for our skills, for our akhlaq, for our, we can do, you know, infaq and giving away of our skills, giving away of our good morals, our smile is also sadaqah and charity, infaq, it can be different things. So yes, uh, for infaq, because it is an action, amalun ikhtiyari, it is ikhtiyari in our reach to do, and it is done by somebody who has intellect. So hamd is, the conditions of hamd is full, are fulfilled in the case of infaq. So, 
but in fact can also be but in fact can also be mud so is there any example i gave where it was hump only i'm not not in anything not in my books i don't know if anybody else has anything but i don't i don't recall right now on top of my mind uh, what example i gave at that time but what's the criteria what's the what's the criteria for something to be hamd but not mad well hamd is uh, uh, is the praise done on amalun ikhtiyari uh, so but, but all of that is, can be done with mad as well well mad is uh, is done um, yeah so in the in the concept of hum let me read to you the definition uh, i don't have uh, right now uh, so it be just a minute for me to get to that page Yeah, I don't have the example on, in my head right now to to say I have to and go back to the notes and uh, I don't want to make a mistake. Uh, so uh, I will then mention. So to this you is very really delicate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to make a mistake in that. So This is all language, language, or like, or uh, is like definitions of things. Or is this no, language? No, it's Islamic perspective as well, but it's important but to learn, to someone, because okay. Quran is all in Arabic, so we have to learn the delicacies in relation to the Holy Quran, which is obviously related to Arabic, so it's unavoidable. You have to learn the Arabic things. But is it if you are praising someone, you need to tell him I am praying Mada or Ham for you? Ham is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's your personal life to use it or not in your everyday life. But when you are reciting Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, or you are reciting Dua of Arafah, or reciting any other ayat of Quran, you need to know exactly what Allah is trying to say. But then, in terms of the Mukhluk people, you are not like doing any niya. This is Ham, Mada, words. For all you. Yeah, in so our, in our, I mean, other than Arabic and other languages that we speak, we are not specific. So in, you can do you whatever you want. But in Allah's case, when Allah is like talking, yeah, is, in, in order to understand the Holy Quran and Hadith and Du'as, which are having all those delicacies of the Arabic language, where even the people of language and the Lugha are making mistakes in, in properly understanding the real difference that the creator of language Allah is teaching us. Even the people of language are making mistakes all the time. So in order to follow, this whole discussion is made so that it facilitates us to understand Quran and Hadith. Okay, so and the real life examples are not then actually Real life examples. examples are just used as assistive evidences. Okay. And in your languages, you can use whatever your own language says. That's okay. But, but when you the general perception is hamd is only for Allah subhanahu wa taala. No, hamd is not specific to Allah. It can be true for any person, anything that has an intellect and who is performing an action with its own free will. But is it is it okay to tell someone like hamd and like? I mean, you're talking about the Islamic perspective, the Islamic perspective of the perspective concept. Of hamd, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So there's nothing wrong to tell someone like Hamdallah. Hamdallah. Instead of like you, you usually say Shukran Allah. Right? Well, yeah, in the everyday language they use the word Shukran. Right. But you never use the word Hamd usually. Yeah, but, but it can okay. be said. It can be said. It can be said. In everyday language, people are in, in different Arabic countries, and with, with respect, due respect to all of them, they speak, use the street language. Street language has its own usages, which uh, some of the words which are uh, used in the street language are 
if you go to the delicacies of the language and the grammatical details, some of the uses are actually incorrect. No, but even in books, I've never seen the word hand used with anybody other than one. Yeah, so. Or even in like, uh, Arabic books, or any form of Arabic. <coughs> we, we praise the Holy Prophet, right? He's called Muhammad, the one who's praised a lot. We don't say, Hamd. It, we don't say Alhamdulillah Muhammad. We can't say that, we right? Can't From the Islamic perspective. Yeah, so. but I haven't seen it. Correct, but it can be said, right? That's the whole point. So, Islamically, it can be said, or again, like Islamically. Islam. But then, what, if it is being said, then it should be in the world, no? Somewhere uh, 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 like this. They should be like very open. Well, duas can be having different reasons and wisdoms. Obviously, I won't comment in a, in a, in a uh, without looking at the dua, but maybe, well, uh, uh, so it may have different wisdoms. Uh, we don't want to bring anybody, uh, uh, we, uh, <coughs> Right now we are talking, is it okay to use the word hamd or not? It is okay to use the word hamd for a human mm, uh, who is doing an, an amal and ikhtiyari, an action in our reach. Now, we use the word usually salat and salam for the Prophet because mm, that's how Allah has commanded in the Holy Quran. So, Allah said, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Because of that, we use the word salat and salam because of the command of Allah. Um, but uh, apart from the command, it's okay to use the word Hamd for the Prophet. He is named Muhammad because he is the subject of the Hamd. A lot of Hamd in the heavens and a lot of Hamd on earth. So he is deserving the Hamd as well. That's why he's named, named, he is named as Muhammad. So Ahmad is obviously different because Ahmad, Ahmad means somebody who praises a lot. So he's called Ahmad because he praises Allah a lot. So Ahmad is related to Allah, but Muhammad is related to Allah and angels and all those who are praising. They praise the Holy Prophet. So he's the subject of the hum. So that's why he's called Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. I will look at 